سورت الانسان is also known as سورت الدهر الانسان the human being and الدهر time and this surah is a makki surah and it is a surah that is to be memorized and a surah that is to be recited in prayer the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to recite surah al-insan in the fajr prayer on friday in one raka he would read surah as-sajda alif lam mim and in the other raka he would recite surah al-insan or surah ad-dahr and as we will read the surah you will know why the surah should be memorized and why it should be recited in prayer you see you can open up the quran and recite from it in your nafl prayers right in your nafl prayers you can recite directly from the mushaf meaning even if you don't have it memorized then you can read from the mushaf but in the fard prayer can you read from the mushaf no you have to read from where from your memory and this surah is such that when you memorize it and when it becomes you know fluent upon your mouth upon your tongue then as you review it as you recite it it truly has an impact on you this is a very powerful surah bismillah arrahman arrahim hal ata ala al insani hal has ata it came meaning has it come ala al insani upon the human being has there come upon the human being what hinun a period min ad-dahri of the time hin means time and ad-dahr also means time but there is a slight difference ad-dahr from the root letters dal ha ra which is the word after which the surah is named dahr means time or fate basically the word dahara gives the meaning of overcoming something prevailing over something and if you think about it time is such that it prevails over you how often is it that you find yourself in a situation where you have so much work to do you're still working but your time is overcoming you right the time is overcoming you you're not done with your work but the time is moving on You're not ready for something but the time is moving on. You can stop the clock but can you stop the time? You cannot. You want summer to last forever but will it? No. With time seasons will change. With time your body will change. With time your roles will change. With time everything changes and with that change what power do you have against it? No power. You are defeated. You are helpless. So this is dahr and it is said that dahr is time from the beginning of the world to its end from the beginning of the world until its end we all know that universe is made of what space matter and time so time this is dahr that always was and until the end and this is why the word dahr is also used for fate or fortune and we see that the arabs they would blame a dahr So anything bad that would happen they would curse dahr they would blame time but blaming time for what has happened is like what blaming who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there is nothing that happens at a given time or with time nothing changes except by whose will and whose permission and whose command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is why there is a hadith in Muslim in which we learned that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that la tasubbu ad-dahr do not curse time like what's the point what are you going to get out of cursing time and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fa inna allah huwa ad-dahr allah is ad-dahr it doesn't mean that dahr is one of the names of allah no it just means that there is no dahr without allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creating it and there is nothing that changes with time except by allah's command So if you blame time you blame who Allah and hin is also used for time so hinu min ad-dahr would mean a time from from eternity all right so a period of time all right so hal ata ala al-insani has there not come upon the human being hinu min ad-dahri a period of time when lam yakun he was not shay'an anything that is madhkura that is even mentioned 
Madhkur from dhikr. Madhkur is one whose dhikr is done. One that is mentioned. What is mentioned? Something that exists. Or something that is known. Or something that is significant. Right? If there is something that has no existence, no concept, will it be mentioned? No. If there is something that is not significant, will it be mentioned? No. So basically this is a question that has there not come upon the human being a period of time when he was not even a thing that is mentioned. In other words, there was a time when man did not exist. There was no mention of the human being. There was a time when there was no Adam. There was a time when there is no insan. But there were angels. There were jinn. Isn't it? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to the angels that inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. Before even Allah created Adam, He mentioned to the angels that I am going to appoint a khalifa on the earth. Before that, there was no concept of a human being. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew about it, but the angels had no idea. Right? Even the jinn had no idea. So, firstly, what this shows to us is the fact that we are not the first creation to exist in this world. A long time passed before us when there was not a single human being that lived. But were there other creatures that lived, that existed? Certainly, there were the angels, there were the jinn. And, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُ Right? And other creatures also, of whose names, identities we have no idea about. But, bring this to your own life. Think about yourself now. Al-insan, not just human being, but you. Put your name over here. And ask yourself, was there not a time when I did not even exist? When there was no mention of me? No sin card. No ID. Nothing. No identification. Nothing at all. There was a time when we did not exist. Then what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna خَلَقْنَا insan. Indeed, we created the human being. You came here because Allah made you. There was a time when there was no you. You didn't exist. Inna خَلَقْنَا insan. We created the human being. From where? From what? مِن نُطْفَةٍ From a nutfa, a sperm drop, a trickle. And this nutfa was amshaj, a mixture. Nutfatin amshajin. Amshaj from the root letters meem, sheen, jim. Some say that amshaj is a plural of the word mashij. Mashij. Meem, sha, ya, jim. And mashij is a mixture of some things. Meaning when some things are mixed together so they have become one. So, Nutfatin Amshaj. This is referring to the nutfa, the mixture of the nutfa of the father and the mother, of the man and the woman, the sperm and the ovum. We created him from a nutfa that is amshaj. Why? Why did Allah create us? Nabtalihi. We test him. We try him. Nabtali from ibtila. What does ibtila mean? To put something to test. How? Basically the word means to turn something upside down. Right? You know, up and down, again and again. Why? In order to test its true qualities or true worth. Ibtila is to test something to know the reality. To know its reality. Because on the outward, things may look very beautiful and strong. Isn't it? But when you turn them about, when you handle it in your hand, when you throw it, when you let it fall, when you let it have a strong impact on it, then you see what its reality is. Isn't it? Which is why many times when there's new products that are out, people will test them. Isn't it? They will review them. And in order to test them, what will they do? Sometimes they will put a phone in a case and throw it. Isn't it? They will do such things. Why? To see 
how strong it really is. Now, Allah says, نَبْتَلِيهِ We test insan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us, why? In order to test us. Which by definition means, life is not meant to be a breeze. Life in this world is not meant to be easy. It is going to be difficult. There will be test after test. One hardship after another. One, you know, situation after another. And in each situation we are being examined, we are being tested. What happens is that many times in our lives we strive, we work hard to get to a position where things will be comfortable. Right? And we try so hard and we aim for comfort, but then what happens? What we want or what we desire, it doesn't become a reality. And we get disheartened over there. We get disappointed over there. Well, it was never meant to be easy. You were aiming for comfort in this world. You were never going to have complete comfort in this world. Life is meant to be difficult. نَبْتَلِيهِ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ So we have made him, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the human being, how? سَمِيعًا as one who hears, and بَصِيرًا as one who sees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given man the ability to hear, perceive sound, understand what he hears, reflect on it, remember it, and also see, look, identify, learn. Samiran Basira. What we see in this ayah is that there was a time when there was no human being. He had no existence. And then what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him. If Allah didn't make him, there would be no human being. And in this life, while man is alive, what's going on? He is being tested. And for that test, he has been equipped with the necessary tools. And what are those tools? Sam and Basar. Hearing and seeing. And then, إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ sabil. Indeed, we have guided him to the path. Which path? The path that is right. Meaning the right way to live. Allah says that we have guided man also. We have shown him what is right. And this guidance is both internal and external. Internal, how? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put within the human being his conscience, morality. Like we learned earlier also, nafsil lawama. Right? That also guides you to what is right. So, hadaynahu sabil, we have guided him internally and externally. How? By sending messengers. By creating so many signs around him. So, إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ sabil. We have shown him the path. إِنَّا shakiran. Now it is up to the insan. Either he can be shakir, he can be grateful, وَإِنَّا kafura, Or he can be ungrateful. The choice is his. What do we see over here? Look at it from the beginning, the first verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created time, at dahr And from the beginning, so many things have been happening. But there was a long time when there was no existence of any human being. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam. Adam came, Adam left. After Adam came, his children. They came, they left. And then generation after generation. And right now, you are here. You weren't always here. And you will not always be here. You have a short time in this world. A very short time. Think about how old this universe is. Millions of years, isn't it? And out of those billions of years, how much do you have? How much? Maybe 60, maybe 70, maybe 30, maybe 20? Who knows? But even if it's a hundred, what is a hundred years? compared to billions of years. It's very short, very little. But this is the time that you have, in which Allah has equipped you. He is testing you, but He has also equipped you. He has blessed you with intellect. 
He has blessed you with the ability to see, to recognize, to hear, to understand, to learn, to apply, to distinguish. And He has also placed within you the ability to distinguish right from wrong and also external guidance. Whether it is from the scripture or it is from the guidance of the messengers or it is from the righteous that are around you or the events, the things that happen in the universe. إِنَّا هَذَيْنَاهُ sabil. And constantly in your life things change. They don't always remain the same because you are being tested. And in every test, what is being examined? إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا That how do you respond in that situation? Is it with gratitude or is it with ingratitude? Notice over here, Iman and Kufur is not mentioned. What is mentioned? Gratitude versus ingratitude. Because believing in Allah, worshipping Him, praising Him, turning to Him, whether it is to seek His help or to turn to Him in seeking His forgiveness, this is what? This is gratitude. And kafur, kufr is what? Ingratitude, denial, rejection. So you always have these two choices. Imma shakiran wa imma kafura. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, كُلُّ النَّاسِ يَغْدُوا Every person begins the morning. How? In a state that he is ready to strike a deal with his soul as a stake. فَبَائِعُنْ نَفْسَهُ Meaning, you have your nafs to buy or sell. This is all you have. Either you're going to lose yourself or you're going to gain profit through it. And he said, he either ransoms it or puts it into destruction. Every day you have the opportunity to either free your nafs, because remember, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ Rahina. Every day you have the opportunity to either free yourself from hellfire or to give it to Allah and gain endless reward. Every moment is an opportunity. Every day is an opportunity. And then we see that those who are grateful are the ones who seize that opportunity. Now, what happens is that in life, as we go through different tests, sometimes it's very difficult to remain grateful. What is it that prevents us from feelings of gratitude? It's the hardships of life. Isn't it? Because life is not meant to be easy. So even when you are doing something that is important and you're facing hardship in it, what does that make you feel? Happy or unhappy? Unhappy. You forget the big picture and you focus on what? On the temporary pain. So it does get difficult. But when you remember your reality and what is your reality? You're here for only a few years. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you so much. The fact that He created you is itself a blessing. Because you weren't even anything that was mentioned. You didn't exist. He gave you your existence. You know like people say, they saved my life. They saved my life, I'm so thankful to them. Well, Allah made your life. The fact that He created us is a reason that we should remain grateful. No matter what happens in our lives. So, إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا إِنَّا أَعْتَدْنَا Indeed, we have prepared لِلْكَافِرِينَ For those who deny. For those who deny, we have prepared for them سَلَاسِلْ Chains, plural of the word silsila. And what is a silsila? We have read this word earlier also. A chain with which a prisoner is tied. وَأَغْلَالًا Not just chains, but also shackles, plural of the word غُلْ وَسَعِيرًا And also a blaze. Chains with which they are tied. أَغْلَال With which they cannot move. And سَعِير Which they cannot run away from. So those who live with ingratitude will be seized one day, will be held accountable one day, they will be caught one day. With what? Salasil, aghlal, and sa'ir. In Surah Ghafir, Ayah 71, Allah says, إِذِ الْأَغْلَالُ فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ وَالسَّلَاسِلُ يُسْحَبُونَ فِي الْحَمِيمِ ثُمَّ فِي النَّارِ يُسْجَرُونَ Here also we see aghlal, salasil, and fire. 
mentioned together. And this is the result for who? For those who do kufr. And kufr, yes, it is denial. But ingratitude is also a form of denial. And if you think about it, when a person remains ungrateful, unhappy, isn't he burning inside? Hasn't he put himself in, in sa'ir? In this life also? You have so many things for which you could be happy about. For which you could be grateful for. But you're thinking about that one problem, or that one issue, and because of that you are burning, unhappy. Ingratitude cripples you. It shackles you. It doesn't let you see. It doesn't let you recognize the opportunities that Allah has given you. And what does gratitude do? It sets you free. It lets you see. It lets you seize good opportunities. So the way a person lives in this world, that is what he will find in the hereafter. On the other hand, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارِ Indeed, the righteous ones. Abrar, plural of the word, bar. And who is bar? One who does? Bir. And what does bir mean? Kindness. Basically, the word bir is used for being dutiful. Dutiful towards who? Towards one's parents. And also, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Birrul walidain. What does birrul walidain mean? To be dutiful towards one's parents. To obey them, to take care of them, to treat them well. This is bir. But then bir is not just towards parents, but also towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning obedience to Allah. Remember Isa alayhi salam said, وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي I have been made bar, meaning one who does bir with my mother. But remember, bir, it's also used for a variety of good deeds. Meaning when a person doesn't just limit himself to one kind of good deed, but he performs different types of good deeds. So, bar is also used for someone who treats relatives and strangers well. Meaning no matter who he comes across, he treats them well, with kindness, with affection. And when a person begins to treat everyone well, then what happens? He gathers up many good deeds. And people who are selective, I will only do good to those who are good to me. I will only greet my friends. I will only smile at my friends. Then what happens? He limits himself. Doesn't he? So a bar person is one who is amply, extensively good. He doesn't restrict himself. But whatever great opportunity he finds, he takes advantage of it. So, in al abrar But who can do that? Someone who's grateful inside. Right? So, in al abrar indeed the righteous, yashrabuna, they will drink. Min ka'sin, from a cup. The word ka's is used for a cup, but not an empty cup, and not an ordinary cup. Cats is used for a cup of wine that has wine in it. Full. Not empty. Not used. You understand? Cats is what? A cup of wine that has wine in it. So the righteous will drink from a cup, mizajuha, meaning, of course, the wine inside it, its mizaj will be of kafura. Mizaj is from Meem Zai Jim Mazaja. And Mazaja is to mix and blend something into a drink. You know, for example, you have coffee, it's plain. But then you ask for a certain flavoring, French vanilla, right? Or something else. So that is added to the coffee, to the drink, in order to give it a distinct flavor, right? And not just distinct, but to enhance its flavor. This is mazaja. And mizaj is that which is blended into a wine. So it's basically a wine blend. And in this world also, when people, you know, go towards fancier wines, right? They are more interested in wine blends. Why? Because it maximizes the expression of a wine. It enhances the aroma. 
it enhances the texture, the body, it makes it more complex. So the wine even in Jannah, Allah says, Mizajuha kafura. It's not plain. It's got a mizaj. It's got a distinct flavor to it. Something has been blended into it to add more complexity and flavor and aroma. And what is that going to be? It is going to be of kafur. What is kafur? In this world, kafur is known as camphor, C-A-M-P-H-O-R, which has a strong aroma. However, of course, when it comes to Jannah, remember only the names are the same. Right? But the reality is different. So, mizajuha kafura. What this tells us is that this will add a distinct, beautiful aroma to the drink. And where is this coming from? What is kafur? Allah says it is aynan. It is a spring. A spring, a source. And this ayn yashrabu biha. He will drink with it. With what? With the ayn. Which ayn? Which spring? Of kafur. How will he drink with it? Who will drink with it? Ibadullah, the servants of Allah. The servants of Allah will drink something with this ayn. Meaning, they will add from this ayn something into their wine, into their cups. You understand? You see in this world you've got your cup of coffee, right? And then you go to the station where you can add cream or milk or sugar, right? How many options do you have? How many? A few maybe? Maybe brown sugar, white sugar, khalas? Right? And that's also what? Just a sweetener? Coming out of paper packets? That's it? Right? And then there's milk and maybe cream? That's it? Just a few options and so boring and standard? Isn't it? But the ability to add whatever you want to your drink, does that make you feel good? As opposed to somebody just passing you a cup here. We added the cream and the sugar for you. You're never satisfied because they put the sugar but they didn't mix it. Right? Or they put the cream but it was just too much. You would never put that much. So this is why to have a better coffee experience, people like to go to places where they have some more control. I can add the sugar myself. I can add the cream myself. I can choose what I want, how much I want. That authority, that liberty is a part of the experience. Isn't it? So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say over here? That the righteous will drink from a cup of wine. It's not plain. That cup of wine is mixed with the blend of kafur, which will make it very fragrant. But who will add that kafur to the drink? Somebody else? So that you have no choice and no control over it? No. Allah says, Aynan yashrabu biha ibadullah. The servants of Allah will drink with it themselves, meaning they will add to their drink themselves. And not just that, this ayn, this spring of kafur, yufajirunaha tafjira. The servants of Allah will make it gush forth themselves. Yufajiruna. Yufajiruna from fajimra. Fajara. What does it mean? To break something, to cleave it, how at a large scale. And also in abundance. So the servants of Allah in paradise will not just have control over how much they want to add to their drink, but they will have full control over this ayn, over the spring. So much so that they will make it gush forth themselves. Yufajiruna. They will make it gush forth themselves. Where? Where? Is the place mentioned? No. What does it mean then? Wherever they want. In their living room? Okay. Outside somewhere? Okay. On the right or on the left? Sure. Wherever you want. This is the authority that the people of Jannah will be given. What about us? If you're sitting at a table and you want to add something to your drink or something, you have to go to the station. Isn't it? It's amazing how sometimes you have to go to a station to get ketchup even. Sometimes they're so cheap, they won't even put it at your table. You have to go to the station, get a paper copy kind of thing, add some ketchup to it and mustard maybe, and bring it. And that also is what? In limited supply. Isn't it? 
يُفَجِّرُونَهَا تَفْجِيرًا They will make the spring gush forth in force, in abundance, wherever they want. To the right or to the left, a lot or a little, in their homes or wherever. Just like we learn in the Qur'an, تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهِمُ الْأَنْهَارِ That the rivers will flow underneath them. Underneath them meaning under their control. Under their full control. But sometimes we don't even have control over the water that is coming out of a tap. Isn't it? You're trying to wash your hands and the water, it just stops. And you're waiting for it, waving your hand, it doesn't come. And then it comes when you don't want it to come. Right? Or it comes too fast or it comes too slow. You don't have control. You don't. In Jannah is where the servants of Allah will be given this control. عَيْنًا يَشْرَبُ بِهَا عِبَادُ اللَّهِ يُفَجِّرُونَهَا تَفْجِيرًا However and whenever. 